Welcome back, anatomy students. Today we're going to talk about the appendicular skeleton. So in the word appendicular, appendage, right? So those are your appendages, the things that are attached to your axis, your arms and your legs, and your pectoral girdle, which attaches the arm to the axis, and the pelvic girdle, which attaches the legs to the axis. So let's talk about the bones of the pectoral girdle. There's only two, so that's pretty easy. You got the clavicle, which common name is collarbone, right? So your collarbone is the clavicle, and then your shoulder blades are the scapula. So you have two of each, right? Because we're bilaterally symmetrical. I want to point out a few special points on the scapula. So if you feel the back of your scapula, you'll find a ridge. So that ridge right here is the spine of the scapula. So remember, a spine is a sharp, slender process. So it's a rather sharp, slender process found on the posterior portion of the spine. My students commonly mislabel the clavicle and the spine of the scapula. So if you were to be given a, a graphic that you had to label, make sure you pay attention to what, what view you have. So the posterior view, you're looking at the back side of the body, right? That can only be the spine. I don't see the scapula or the um, clavicle from the back side. And if your view was anterior, then you're looking at the clavicle. You don't see that from, you don't see the spine of the scapula from the front. So clavicle is anterior and spine of the scapula is posterior. Now, if you continue with that ridge, and you can do this on yourself, right? Follow that ridge up until it flattens out on the top of your shoulder blade or on the top of your shoulder. And that would be called the acromion process. So you'll see the clavicle articulates, joins with the scapula at the acromion process. So that seems like a good thing to know. Down in front, you have this C-shaped hook. This is called the coracoid process. So I make my students learn this because we're gonna learn muscles of the chest in the next chapter, and some of those are going to attach here at the coracoid process. So to us, that's gonna be important. Also related to um, muscles of the, of the arm and going to be articulating with the arm itself, we have this curvature on the inside of the scapula, and that's called the glenoid cavity. So the glenoid cavity makes the ball and socket joint with your upper arm. So you have the scapula, the spine of the scapula ending in the acromion process, in front the coracoid, and then the glenoid cavity. So those are the four special features that I like my students to learn. And then you have the clavicle, which articulates with the axial skeleton. So that's the only point of attachment to the axial skeleton. So attaching the glenoid cavity, we have the humerus, which is your upper arm bone. So that's where our, we find our biceps. And later we're going to find out there's more than one bicep. But for now, this is where you know your biceps are found. So this is the humerus, the upper arm. I only ask my students to learn one special feature on the humerus, and that's the olecranon fossa. So we're looking at the back side of the arm. I just turned it around. But you see this is my elbow joint, correct? So this elbow joint, you have to have a groove that this process can fit into, and that's called the olecranon fossa. So I could have grabbed this one instead. So here, you see, <laughs> is the olecranon fossa, that like pit. And you can see your elbow, the bony portion of your elbow fits into that joint. So that's the olecranon fossa, and that would be the olecranon process. So the process fits into the fossa to make up your elbow joint. So moving on into the lower arm, so we were just talking about the olecranon process. So I'm going to grab this one again. Um, so that would be the bony projection of your elbow. So what you you think of as your elbow is your olecranon process, and that's part of your ulna. So your ulna is the long skinny bone that goes towards your pinky. And if you're standing anatomically correct, like my friend Bones is, I can see that his pinky is found on the medial side. So the olecranon process is part of the long skinny ulna, which leads towards the pinky on the medial side. The other arm of the the other bone of the lower arm is the radius. So this one is shorter, thicker, does not quite articulate at the elbow. And it has a special feature in that it can rotate around the ulna. 
So this is called a pivot joint. And if you held your arm just below your elbow and you tried to turn it, you would be able to actually see I'm watching my radius rotate around my ulna and my ulna doesn't move. So that's kind of cool. And then let's look at the hand. The radius runs towards the thumb. So the thumb, the lateral portion, this is the radius. And when you go to the doctors and they take your pulse, they're going to feel right here, just above your thumb, and that's called your radial pulse. So at the end of the arm, you have your hand and your wrist. So we have eight carpal bones. Your wrist bones are called your carpal bones. And when you go to college and you take your anatomy classes, you'll probably have to learn every one of those as individual names. But for my kids in high school, we're just doing the carpals in general. There's eight of them. And then we have five metacarpals, metamiddle. So between the fingers and the wrist, we have five metacarpals. So that makes up the palm of your hand. And you can check that out. Try to feel for each one of those. And, and it's kind of cool to investigate yourself. So those are your five metacarpals. And they're actually numbered one through five. So starting on the thumb side, you would count one, and on the pinky side, you would count five. So one, two, three, four, five. If you had a break in your fourth metacarpal, that would be a break in your ring finger. So understanding those numbers helps you locate more accurately um, structures. So we have metacarpals that make up the palm of our hand, and then we have our phalanges. And you know you have five fingers. You see them right here. And if you look at them, you can probably figure out how many digits are in each, right? So there's three phalanges in that finger. And there's three in this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. But there's only two in my thumb. So I have 14 total phalanges, three in two through five. So the thumb only has two, and the thumb has a special name called the pollux. So... Later, you're going to learn the hallux, and I have trouble keeping those straight, so I had to come up with a mnemonic, and I used thumbs up, Bali, and that helps to remember that the thumb is the pollux. So that's the bones of the upper portion of the appendicular skeleton, the pectoral girdle, the arms, the wrists, the hands, and fingers. So I hope that was helpful, and thank you so much for listening.